Example 5.11. In this example, we have water flowing through a nozzle attached at the end of a laboratory sink faucet with a flow rate of 0.6 liters per second. The nozzle inlet and exit diameters are given, and the nozzle axis is considered to be vertical. The mass of the nozzle is given, as well as the pressure at point 0.1. We need to determine the anchoring force required to hold this nozzle in place. This problem is going to be a conservation of momentum inside of a control volume. Notice in the plot that we have velocities to be a constant and uniform at each of the control surfaces. We have a two control surfaces, one incoming and then another one outgoing, and the control volume is described by this boundary. We also consider this uh, problem to be a steady and we are going to neglect friction forces. However, we are going to include the gravitational forces for both the fluid as well as the nozzle. Since this is a conservation of momentum problem, we need to draw a free body diagram for all the forces involved we're going to start with the gravitational forces and we have going downwards we have the weight of the nozzle we are also going to include the weight of the water we have two different pressures one going into the first control surface that is going to PV P1 times the control area 1 and then we have at this point pressure 2 and control area 2. The last force that we are going to take into account is the anchor force, which is what we're looking for in this problem, and we're going to select it to go in upwards. So basically, these are all the forces that we're going to have. Notice that all of those forces are going to be in the positive vertical direction, which is considered to be the Z direction. We start the analysis with the Reynolds transport theorem for conservation of momentum given in this form. We are only going to use the Z direction since those, that's the only direction that we have for forces and velocities. This case is steady, therefore we could take this term and make it equal to zero. We're going to simplify this integral by evaluating the velocities at each one of the control surfaces. Since both of the velocities at control surface 1 and 2 are constant, we're able to substitute this uh, integral as simply the summation of the velocities times the mass flow rate at each of the control surfaces, and that is going to be equal to the summation of the forces that we're going to have for each particular axis, in this case, the z-axis. So we do the evaluation for the two control surfaces. We simply have control surface 1 and control surface 2. We write W1 M1 W2 M2. Now let's put simply uh, signs into this. W1 is going downwards which is in the negative direction for the z-axis, so we put a negative in here. Mass flow rate is going into the system, so it's going to be negative. W2 is going, once again, in the negative direction, so we write it as negative. And this mass flow rate is outgoing, so it's going to be positive. Now this is going to be equal to all the forces that are acting inside of the control volume in the z-axis. So the forces that we have are going to be Fa in the positive direction. We have P2, A2 in the positive direction. We got minus Wn, the weight of the nozzle, the negative weight of the water, and we also have negative P1, A1. So these are all the different forces that we have in the system. 
So once again, we need to do the summation of the velocities and the mass flow rates at each one of the control surfaces, and that is going to be equal to all the different forces that are acting inside of that control volume. The next step in the process is to calculate the values that we need to be able to plug in into this formula. Let's start with the mass flow rates. Since we have a conservation of mass, we know that the mass flow rate going into the control volume has to be exactly the same mass going out. So we know that the mass going in is equal to the mass leaving, which is the mass flow rate. And that is going to be simply the density times the value of Q. Since the value of Q is given and we know the density of the fluid, we could calculate this to be equal to 0.599 kilograms per second. So now we need to determine what is the velocities at the first and the second control surface using the mass flow rate. We know that the mass flow rate at point 0.1 is determined as rho W1 A1. Since we have the density, the area, and the mass flow rate, we could calculate the velocity at point 0.1, and that is going to be 2.98 meters per second. Following the same process, M2, rho, W2, A2, we could calculate the velocity at point 0.2, and that is going to give us 30.6 meters per second. Having the information of the mass of the nozzle, we could calculate the weight of the nozzle. That is going to be equal to 0.981 newtons. Since we have the amount of the volume of the water and we have the density, we could calculate its mass. And with that, we could calculate the weight of the water. And that is going to be simply equal to 0.0 to 78 newtons. The pressure at point one is already given, and that is going to be equal to 464 kilopascals. And because at point two, we are exposed to the atmosphere, the value of B2 is going to be equal to zero. So now let's substitute all these quantities into this formula, and we get negative and negative becomes positive and this becomes 2.98 meters per second times the mass flow rate which is 0 0.599 kilograms per second negative and positive becomes negative and this becomes w2 which is 30.6 meters per second times its mass flow rate 0.599 kilograms per second and this is equal if a is the anchoring force we're looking for p2 we said that is equal to zero minus wn is equal to 0.981 newtons minus the weight of the water and lastly the pressure uh, 464. Notice that this is kilopascal, so it has to be times 10 to the 3 pascals so that it cancels out properly. And then we multiply by the area, which is equal to pi over 4 in the diameter at that point, 0 0.016 meter square. Once we calculate all these values and we solve for the anchoring force, we could determine that that force is going to be equal to 77.8 newtons. So as a review, we need to be able to simplify this integral. Since we have velocities to be constant, the integral becomes simply the summation of the velocities times the mass flow rate at each one of the control surfaces. We set up those velocities and that's ma those mass flow rates. We assign the sign based on the 
coordinate system for the velocities and whether it's going in or out of the control volume for the mass flow rates. Then we do the summation of all the forces for that particular coordinate. We were able to go back and calculate each one of the quantities to replace into this equation. We substitute it. We need to make sure that the units are consistent. Therefore, whenever we had times kilopascal, we multiply times 10 to the positive 3 so that everything, all the units will cancel out and we are able to determine the final value of the anchoring force.